Right now, NTSB is in a fact-gathering mode. They know the train was going too fast. They want to inter interview the engineer and ask him what was going on inside the cab. And they are looking at all of the equipment, all the evidence, and trying to figure out, you know, what exactly happened. But the, that's a process that's going to take a long time. The black boxes on the train, which are the vent data recorder, will, has some basic information about speed and throttle position. So it will tell investigators where the throttles were during this critical period right before the derailment. Eventually, NTSB will come forward and say, okay, we've looked at everything. Here's what we think happened to cause this accident. Here are the contributing factors that made it more likely this accident would occur. Here's what we think you can do to prevent these kinds of accidents from happening in the future. And they may also make recommendations on things like survival factors. Were there ways that these um, train cars could have been designed to prevent loss of life? Positive train control is something that NTSB has been pushing for 45 years. Now, obviously, over time, technology has changed, but there were precursors of positive train control that long ago. And essentially, it's a way to automatically brake or stop trains when they get into a bad situation, when they're about to collide with another train, when they're going too fast for the speed limit and are at risk of derailing, also when switches are set in the wrong position and they may ram into something or go onto track that they shouldn't go into. So it it's uses wireless technology, it uses GPS technology, and, but it's a complicated system and railroads are having a hard time implementing it.